Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, we compare HDR FX Pro with ORI HDR. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I am a French photographer from the beautiful city of Paris. And I make two total per week. This week, we're going to compare HDR FX Pro with ORI HDR. If you want to get the three raw files, really cool raw files to get this, all you have to do is sign up on my website, put in your email address, and then when you're on YouTube and you're watching one of my videos, there is a link. You can click on the link. It's going to take you to a page where you can download the source files of that video. Voilà, so with no further ado, here is the match of HDR FX Pro against Aurora HDR Pro. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and welcome to this match of HDR AFX Pro from Google against Aurora HDR. Now, a little warning, uh, to be honest, I, I work with Aurora HDR and actually get money if you download and you purchase Aurora HDR through my links. So I am biased. I am not being completely, you know, uh, objective and complete exterior because, you know, I prefer Aurora HDR. I work with them. They are partners. But HDR AFX Pro is free. Um, it's funny because I bought uh, the, um, the whole Nix software package for about $800 way back four or five years ago. And then they sold it to Google. They got the price down to $150. And now, HGRFX Pro is completely free. We don't know if Google is going to keep on updating, but so far it's free and it's an awesome software. I don't think it's as good as Aura, but I, th I still think it's an awesome software. So I wanted to compare with two photos. So you will get the links of HGRFX Pro in the description of this video. And so this is the HDR FX Pro free, and this is the ORI HDR, which was developed by Trey Ratcliffe and MacFun, which is not free, but you can get for $89 instead of $99 if you go through that link. And I do get money on it, and you help me produce free tutorials for you guys. But let's be uh, nice and let's compare. Uh, this is a set of HDR photo I shot in New Zealand, which I will provide you, and I'll explain you later on how you can get these raw files. Uh, that is the normal exposure, that's the overexposure, and that's the underexposure. If you notice, uh, all three exposure are a bit dark. The reason is I was not on a tripod. And when you want to do HDR and you want to go plus two, minus two, what I advise you is to put your camera in manual mode. And uh, what I did is I went to ISO 100. I went at 7.1 and 250 of a second. Why? Because uh, you want to make sure you want to make sure that your overexposed photo is still sharp. Okay, and uh, so the uh, overexposed photo is going to be a longer exposure than 250. It's going to be two f stops more. Two f stops more is what? How do you calculate an f stop? Well, you take 250, you divide it by two. That's 125. That's one f stop. You take 125, you divide it by two, and you come to something like 63. Uh, 63. So one sixty-three of a second would be two more f-stops, and that photo was taken at one sixty of a second. One sixty of a second, uh, it's still fast enough to not be blurry, hold by a human being. So, in a nutshell, if you're doing HDR by hand and you don't have a tripod, put your normal exposure at one two fifties of a second, seven point one ISO one hundred, and you hope that your scene is properly exposed. This was slightly under uh, underexposed, but I like to have underexposed photo all the time. So I have a very peculiar workflow when I work with uh, HDR software is I do a bit of retouching first in Lightroom before going into uh, uh, before going into the HDR software. That is just my personal, you know, source, you know, my technique, my method, mesdames et messieurs. So I'm going to open up the shadows. Now, I don't do it the plus 101. Uh, you know, I open up a bit the shadows, bring down a bit the highlights. In this case, not that much. I just want to open up a little bit, do a little bit of whites and blacks um, on the normal exposure. Maybe boost a little bit the exposure because I find it's a bit underexposed. So I do a little bit. I don't do much. I add a bit of vibrance because honestly, this scene was amazing. I mean, the raw files don't give it justice. And you have to know raw files usually are very neutral. And these ones are very neutral. They, they don't have a lot of saturation. But it was a beautiful view of Queenstown, New Zealand. You know, the sun was just coming down. It was so bright. And the often colors were really vibrant. You know, and I kind of lost that. Now I'm trying to get that back. And that's why... I also want it with HDR, and just because HDR is popular, and uh, you know, it's not popular on professional photographer, but it's very popular among Instagram, uh, you know, 500px, or a lot of communities still love HDR. So, um, hmm, let me see. The key thing on this one is going to be white balance. I think I'm going to go for daylight because uh, I like the idea of having blue in the sky and a bit warmer here. Uh, so daylight, maybe let's go to shade, uh, like I show you shade. Shade is too warm. Everything is warm now. Uh, so I think daylight 
is nicer. I like the idea of having blue here and a bit warmer there. I might add a, a little bit of green of, or magenta, a little bit of magenta, like a plus 20, because people call me Mr. Magenta. And one thing I want to do on this one, I want to try to go to camera calibration and go to Adobe Landscape. Camera landscape, you, sh you should all have that. That's gonna give it a much more vivid color. It's gonna make it darker too. So uh, usually I'm just gonna open up a little bit more of the shadows on this one and maybe boost the exposure a little tiny bit. Okay, so that's my normal exposure. What I wanna do also is I wanna do a bit of noise reduction because HDR is gonna boost the noise. I mean, this is Sony A7R2 files, so they're pretty decent. But, you know, when I do HDR, and that's just my personal source, I just add a little bit of noise reduction, like something like 18, and I do a bit of sharpening, like something around like 50. So it's just a bit of sharpening, a bit of noise reduction. I always put my masking at 50, because remember, masking, when you hold down the Alt key, what it's gonna do is show you in black what is not gonna get sharpened. Anything which is black is not gonna get sharpened. I don't wanna sharpen the sky. So I did a bit of sharpening, a bit of noise reduction, you know, just a little bit, not too much, okay. Now, so I did a bit of retouching. Now, what I'm, going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the other two photos, okay? And I'm going to click Synchronize and Synchronize, okay? And now, because I've installed the softwares, they all come with Lightroom plugins. So I'm going to right-click, I'm going to export, and I'm first going to export into Aura HDR. Aura HDR is slower than HDR FX Pro. HDR FX Pro is faster, and it's free. But AOR HDR does things that, you know, HDR FX Pro doesn't do. Uh, you have two options. If you have updated your AOR HDR, you have open original image or use TIFF with Lightroom adjusters. That's what you want in this case because you've done some work in Lightroom and you want it, you want AOR HDR to take into account. So I'm launching that and in the same time, I'm going to export and I'm going to launch HDR FX Pro. Now, HDR FX Pro, you only have one option, which is this one. It's actually the exact same one with Aurora meaning it's gonna create TIFF files and it's gonna deal with TIFF files, meaning it's gonna take into account all you've done in Lightroom. So I'm gonna launch the exact same raw files with the exact same retouching in both software, okay? They're gonna launch and I'm gonna put this on pause until it's ready. All right, so here we have, um, uh, this is, actually this is Aura HDR. So you have three options and actually both software have the same option. Alignment, ghost reduction, chromatic aberration. I'm only gonna do alignment because remember I shut this by hand. So I'm gonna click on create HDR. That's gonna launch Aurora HDR. I'm gonna go back to HDR FX Pro and we get the same options. Alignment by, uh, the only difference is alignment by default is already marked, okay? So I'm gonna do something and chromatic aberration, I'm just gonna take it off. I'm just gonna do alignment for now. There was not much chromatic aberration on these photos and voila. Create HDR. Uh, I'm not gonna go deeply explain you all the both software. You can check on my channel. You just have Surge Remedy or HDR. You get tons of tutorials on it. But I just wanna compare it with the same photo, same retouching. All you have to do to get the raw file, the three raw files I'm getting for free, is you have to uh, sign up on my uh, daily newsletter. And then once you've signed up, you go back on YouTube on the video. On the video, there will be a link. You click on that link, and that's gonna take you to a, a secret place. Be because you're logged into my website, you can get the raw files. So you can get it straight from that video, but you have to create an account first and be logged in on my account. It's free. All you're gonna get is a daily newsletter from me with a lot of promotion on my premium courses and a lot of free tips and photos. All right, so let's see the difference. This is HDR AFX Pro. Let's start out with that. So that's out of the blue. Uh, there is a lot of presets, and I love to work with presets, whether it's with HDR FX Pro or whether it's with Aura, I love to work with presets. What I usually go to is always the realistic one. Uh, and on this one, that's the default realistic one. I kind of find it that it lacks of punch, you know? So one, one, one that I like is Deep. Deep 1 or Deep 2? Deep 1 or Deep 2? Uh, I kind of like this one. Or you can go on default and you can just play around. You see, uh, let me show you the different settings really fast. Tone compression, if you go the whole way on the right, what tone compression is, is basically, uh, it's gonna make your, high, uh, your shadows very bright and your highlights very dark, okay? So it goes very unnatural. If you, I like to go very natural on this one. So I'm gonna put a low tone compression, meta strength, I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, and then you got basically, HDR FX Pro is pretty simple. It's got a lot less settings than OR HDR. So you've got um, uh, HDR methods. I'm gonna go on strong on this one. You can go to normal, but I think on this one I need a bit more punch. So I'm gonna go on strong. Detail, I always go on realistic because if you start going to accentuated or detailed 
or grungy, it just looks really bad. So I always put it on realistic. Drama, I kind of go, maybe I can go to deep, okay? Then here you got basically uh, different settings that are very similar to, uh, to Lightroom. I'm just gonna boost the blacks. I wanna boost the blacks. I wanna boost the saturation. And uh, voila, basically uh, that's that. And um, so I started off with the basic preset of uh, uh, you know realistic default. Okay, now one thing that's really cool about uh, Nick Software, which is now the uh, HDR FX Pro, is they have what they call the U points, so a selective adjustment. The way it works is you cl click a control point, and for example, I can click here on that sky, uh, and I, I can click on the first slider, I get a little circle. Now, wherever this little circle is pointed, it's only gonna influence that. So if I put it, for example, on the dark side of the cloud, and I boost the exposure, what it's going to do, because it's on the dark side of the cloud, it's only going to influence the dark side. If I put it on the bright side of the cloud, it's only going to influence within the circle, but only the bright side. Okay, what? that's way too much. I wanted that cloud to be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to go like this. Uh, and uh, I just added a bit of exposure. I'm maybe going to add some minus, not saturation, sorry, some minus structure. Here you have different settings. The first one, AX stands for exposure, CO for contrast, SA for saturation, uh, structure. Uh, if you go to the right, you add more structure, which I don't like on clouds, so I'm gonna go the other way, I'm gonna go left. I want this to be a bit fuzzy, okay? You got the white points, the temperature, the tint, and the meta strands, okay? I'm kind of happy with that. I wanna add more contrast to this photo, because I think it's lacking contrast, and I'm pretty happy with this. You know, out of the blue, uh, I'm pretty happy. So again, I, I use the uh, strong and deep methods. That's usually, this settings is what I go to. So I'm gonna click on save. Okay, while it's saving, I'm gonna go over to Aurora HDR and do the same thing. Boom. Now look at it straight out of the camera. It's pretty uh, more intense. I don't know, there's something about Aurora that I really love. I love HDR and it's free, but Aurora for me is a little bit better. So. I'm gonna to go to realistic HDR, but again, I'm biased. I make money if you purchase this from me. I make money, so you know, I'm not being honest here. Anyways, so basic, I always go to realistic, same thing, realistic HDR, you got nine settings. I always start off with the balance and realistic, which is this one. Now on this one, it really went crazy on, on the saturation, so I'm going to, uh, now you got a lot more settings in, uh, in uh, or HDR, and again, you can Google, on YouTube, you do, or sorry, you go on YouTube, you type Serge Remily, Aurora HDR, you get tons of tutorials on me. But I'm gonna show you very simple stuff. I start out with a preset, always usually balanced and realistic. And on this one, I'm just gonna maybe just lower a little bit the vibrance, because I think it's too crazy. Uh, a little bit more, you know, it's too, too saturated. But I kind of like that, I love the punch that it has. Now one thing that I love about the Aurora HDR is that it's got layers. And I usually work with layers and presets. So what I mean by that, this is the original image. This is, you can see the before and the after. So it brought a lot of contrast and saturation, got a lot of details back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click on plus here, create a new layer, and I want to make like fuzzy clouds. So I can stay here in the uh, realistic HDR, for example, and take foggy morning. And see, foggy morning is gonna give me a very uh, f uh, fuzzy clouds. Uh, I like that. And what I'm going to do with foggy morning is I'm gonna take a little brush, which is here, and as soon as I'm gonna do a brush stroke, what's gonna happen is that this effect is gonna disappear everywhere except on the brush. And by default, the brush is at 50% opacity, so it's not gonna appear in full. Let me show you, I'm gonna do one brush stroke, boom. And with one brush stroke, what's, what's happening is that I get this little fuzzy uh, look only uh, in the sky, okay? And it's not everywhere. Check it out, before, after. I like that little fuzzy. I'm gonna do it actually the, all the way here. I like that. Maybe add a little bit of fuzz, you know, here and here, for example, okay? And then I'm gonna create, uh, um, I'm gonna click on apply and it's gonna re-import it in Lightroom and let's check it out in Lightroom. Let's compare them both. All right, so we are back in Lightroom, and on my left, we have the Aura HDR, and on my right, we have the HDR FX Pro. So right out of the box, the HDR, the, the Aura is much more saturated. It's also, I could get the same effect in the HDR FX Pro. It's just, 
you know, that's the different presets I work with. I didn't think there would be such a difference, but you know, uh, and you can also, I mean, a compare mode in Lightroom, you just select two photos, I press C, and you know, I can compare them, I can zoom in. So on my left is ORHDR, and I can look, you know, like for the noise level, let's look at the trees. I mean, this one is much more saturated. I think they did a great job on the tree. The ghosting effects, we have a bit of ghosting effects on the car here. Uh, I think it's a bit neater on Aurora than it is on EGRFX Pro, but on the other end, I didn't use the ghost options. Um, I don't know, there's, I'm looking at the sky here. Uh, it's a bit blown away here, but that's because I boosted the exposure. Um, yeah, I mean, both of them is pretty decent. So uh, what I would do on this one is, I think I'm gonna go back, Shift Tab, I'm gonna go back and uh, on the Aurora one and I'm gonna crop it. I, I wanna crop it, I, wanna, I don't want so much sky and I don't like these trees here. I, so I would do something like this and boom, you know, like full screen panorama HDR. Uh, usually I do a little development on each. So on this one, I'm mad, I don't know, this one is kind of out of the blue, maybe add a little bit of contrast, maybe desaturate a little bit something like this. And then I'm gonna take the same cropping, so I'm gonna press Shift, Command Shift C, uh, click on Check None, cl click on Process Version and Crop. I just wanna put the crop in the memory to have the same crop on the HDR FX Pro one. Boom, and press Command V. So I'm cropping the same thing, and on this one I'm gonna go the opposite. I'm gonna add Vibrance. Uh, I'm gonna add Vibrance, you know, to make it pop even more, and maybe a bit of contrast and maybe a bit of shadows. It's a bit dark in the shadows, something like this. Okay, and now I'm ready to press C again uh, to compare both. So on my left this time, we have, it goes in full screen mode, LL. Uh, on my left, we have the HDR FX Pro, and on my right, I have the Aurora HDR. I think I like a little bit more the Aurora HDR. And you know, what I love about Aurora is, you know, working with layers, always, you know. I'm giving you this raw file, so if you create an account on PhotoSurge, you can get access, you know, the link will be in the YouTube video. That's how you can get the source file for these videos. And, you know, see for yourself. Uh, but you would gotta download HDRFX Pro, it's free. And give a try to our HDR. It's not free, but it's amazing. Voila, mesdames and messieurs, I hope you like these photos, and uh, I will see you in another episode.